April 28th is the National Day of Mourning, when we remember workers who have been killed or injured on the job. But mourning is not enough. We also need to fight for the living. Over the last few years, we've noticed a significant departure from the original meaning of this important date. It seems that our day of mourning, originally started by the Canadian Union of Public Employees, CUPE, in 1984, has become an occasion for politicians, opportunists, and corporate executives to expound on their own safety virtues while ignoring the causes that often lead to tragedies or the continuous denial of disability entitlements to injured workers. Why is it that in a wealthy modern country like ours, almost three workers die every day from job-related accidents or illness? Governments and companies say that workplace health and safety is important, but the reality is they only act when they are forced to. Day of Mourning is for all working people. The organized and the unorganized as poor safety practices affects everyone and is not limited only to those in the organized labor movement. We need to take back our day of mourning by creating our own labor and community-based event without the official participation of public or private corporations or employers. Day of Mourning is a date to renew our commitment to struggle for a safe workplace, for an end to the causes that leads to accidents, and for taking back and protect our compensation system so undermined by the employer's onslaught and cutbacks. I ask that you remember all workers that were killed and injured this past year and in previous years, but I also ask that we all dedicate ourselves to ensuring that workers return home to their loved ones at the end of a shift. On Saturday, April 28th, beginning at 9 a.m., please join us to commemorate Day of Mourning. Compensate the injured worker, not the employer. <laughs>